Professor John Sumter, uh, and I'm an ecotoxicologist. I st study chemicals in the environment and what they do to animals that live in the environment. Probably about a hundred years ago, relatively few synthetic chemicals were in use. So they would have been using many, many less chemicals in the house, and therefore they would have been exposed to many less chemicals. But the number of chemicals we use is increasing every year by approximately 2,000 per year. It's a big problem. It's often unseen because most of the chemicals are in solution, they're in the water, they're in the soil, and you can't see them. So there are large numbers of chemicals in, it, in everyday use, at, at least 100,000. In a typical shampoo, there will be at least 30 chemicals. So if you read the fine details at the bottom, you'll find there's a long list of chemicals. This would be true in cleaning products as well. And people use drugs, of course, to keep them healthy. But these drugs, after they've taken them, they'll excrete them and they'll end up in the environment as well. There are chemicals in their clothes. There are chemicals on their carpets to stop them getting dirty. And all of these chemicals won't stay in the household. We're exposed to all these chemicals and, and lots of them can be detected in our blood. There are very low concentrations, but we have lots and lots of man-made uh, synthetic chemicals in us. Most of these chemicals used in the household would end up going down a drain and then people forget about them. They don't think after that, well, what happens to all of these chemicals when I have a shower and wash my hair? Well, the answer is they go down the sink and they'll go off to a wastewater treatment plant through the sewage system. Some will be removed, but some won't. So these chemicals haven't gone away. Some of them might have degraded into other chemicals, but some like the very tough chemicals that stop your egg sticking to this frying pan, these are very resistant to degradation that probably will be there for hundreds of years. And we don't understand whether that's a problem or not, but we've already contaminated ourselves and the environment with a wide range of chemicals. So when we use all of these chemicals, we get exposed, of course, but we also forget that our children will get exposed as well. So as we use more chemicals in the, ho in the household, or we take more drugs and pharmaceuticals, what we might forget is each generation was probably exposed, or almost certainly exposed, to more chemicals. And although each individual chemical probably but not definitely, probably is not a problem, we're much, much less clear as to whether there might be a problem due to the complex mixture of chemicals that we're exposed to and the environment's exposed to. So we're not talking about one or two synthetic chemicals in ourselves or the environment. We're talking about large and probably increasing numbers, and we don't have enough knowledge, enough good science to know whether that is or is not going to be a problem. There's particular concern about some groups of chemicals like so-called flame retardants, which would be in your sofa, for example, and also another group of chemicals, which Teflon is an example of, but they're very tough chemicals, meaning they don't break down the chemicals don't stay. They slowly but surely get lost from here and then they're in the water that you wash this up in. Some of them is in the air as well. Uh, so you would breed a small amount of them. Some of these chemicals are just about everywhere. The concentrations would be extremely low. But if you ask, are we certain that such low concentrations are not of concern, the answer would have to be, we think they're not of concern, but we're not certain. Uh, many people ask, well, what can I do? And really all you can advise them is to try and reduce the number of chemicals they use. Do they need to use all of these product products? The less products that they use, the fewer chemicals that they'll expose themselves to, 
and then the fuel will end up in the environment. And then from an industry perspective, try and have less chemicals in individual products, but also try and make chemicals that degrade more easily than some of the existing chemicals do.